What is up, guys and gals? It's time to initiate another episode with a screenshot, apparently. Welcome all back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Might and Magic Heroes 7. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today. Those guys look badass. Those dudes are hardcore as shit. So what do they do? Are they ranged? Okay, so they're ranged. Which means that realistically... They have a lot of ranged, actually. So what can I kill here? How much health did they have? 28. Okay. So what can I do here? What's the difference there? He's an elite creature. He's an abbot. Okay. Let me get rid of some of them then. Couldn't really tell you much beyond that. I'm going to go ahead and throw them into defensive mode. Because their melees are going to come in and come at us. So I'm going to kill him off real quick. Oh really? You can retaliate with ranged? Interesting. Never thought about it that way. My goal for right now is to kill as many things as I can on the first couple turns. So that maybe we end up not taking like a stupid amount of attrition here. What does he deal? Six per and they got four of them, so 24. He does one per and they've got 19 of them. And he deals full damage no, where you, no matter where you are on the map. Okay, so... So wait, does that one have a lot more health? 12... Versus 11. So why is the damage modifier so different right there? That's odd. I don't know exactly why that one has no damage modifier. I'm going to take the good thing when I see it, though. Ah! I killed the whole stack. I killed the whole stack. Look at you mooks. Standing around. I was like, I don't know. I killed the whole stack. I don't know how to go forward with this. We got spears and stuff, and the priest is still over there, but... I don't know. He killed off two of our stacks on the first turn. I kind of just want to quit. Auto resolve. No, my centaur. You shot me with a laser crossbow, you prick. Who shoots a laser crossbow at a guy? Who does that? So are you guys like elites or like how does this work? I shoot the you. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that guy must be a badass. A core creature. Weirdly, I kind of want to get her into a better position so that I can flank a little bit better. Let's get rid of one of these stacks for right now. There you go. You are now prickly. No double turn, unfortunately, but doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter. We'll go in for the kill right there, and if we lose somebody, we lose somebody, but it's not going to frustrate me that much. Kill them off with a knife. Yeah! There it is. That's what I like to see. Perfect. Big old null stack up in here doing work. So that's how you want to balance in this game. If you've got like a bad... There's no unit in Might and Magic that's really like... Or I'm sorry, Mountain Magic Heroes that's really like bad. They all have their advantages and their disadvantages. And stacks like these, these are Zerg mob units. They perform really well. Like for example, a lot of people hate peasants in Might and Magic Heroes. I like peasants. I think peasants are fantastic. You just got to get a big goddamn stack of them that can just bum rush the enemy. In fact, I love peasants. I always recruit present or peasants. Some people do. I also recruit presents in case you were wondering. I like presents a lot too, so you know, send me free stuff. <laughs> I'm just joking. Just messing around with you. She's got a lot of leveling up to do, but she's catching up for right now. She's catching up. I'll probably give her So Hero starts with Blood Rage. See, she doesn't hold on. So it says that you start with five blood rage. Oh, so maybe that's why their attack value goes down over time. It's because, ah, that would make her attack a lot better then. That's what she's lacking. So she needs Blood Rage, and then you take that one right there, and she'd be whooping on some kids. Okay, it took me a while to figure out something comparatively simple, but I guess that's fine. I will probably upgrade her units. This is going to give us the option to take towers, and the town always shoot three times at the same target. Ooh, that's pretty good. I want her to be my governess, and so I'm going to stay away from using a lot of random stuff on her if I can. And then she has unlocked the right to get the gladiator's helmet. Little bit of wood right there, which sounds very, very nice to me because we were actually out of it, so that's going to help with our upgrades for a little bit. Imani. Imani got the gold mine on the previous turn. Imani needs to go grab that wood right there. And I'm not trying to be, like, pimping right now. I'm just... Wait, hold on. Imani needs to grab that wood, too. 
We need stuff to upgrade our hood. Ooh, Shantiri armor. The Shantiri treasure. You take less prime damage. I don't know what that means, but hey. I don't like prime numbers because they're weird and they upset me and they're unnatural, so... Let's go ahead and destroy... Is this a... What was the assessment of this fight? Trivial? Quick combat it. Go ahead and take our Shantiri treasure real fast. This is one of the obelisks of the Shantiri people. The ancient runes are unde er, undecipherable. Wouldn't it be indecipherable? With some orc symbols, I don't know if maybe... Undecipherable, is that even a word? Maybe it's one of those things that it's regional. Like, undecipherable might be a word somewhere else. I thought it was indecipherable, though. Maybe they both exist. What do I know about anything? But some orc symbols have recently been painted on the stone. They seem to indicate what a powerful weapon, or that a powerful weapon once wielded by Malathua, father of Cognac, is buried somewhere nearby. Yay, I love Cognac. So we got the Shantiri armor from right there. Maybe if it has an orange name, you get to keep it forever. So we have the Ring of Face, which is a Shantiri treasure. We have the... Shantiri armor, which is a Shantiri treasure. So maybe if it's just got like a name like in gray, you don't get to keep it. But if it's got like a colored name, you get to keep it or something. I don't know. Somebody said that some of the treasures you get to keep. So this is still a learning process for me. There are th little things that are different. So we visited one obelisk. What happens if we visit all three? So buried treasure. Find the second obelisk. Find the third. So it's just going to be, all right, I'll track it, I guess. Throw that onto my HUD somewhere. It weirds me out that the arrow doesn't come along with it when it goes over there. Like, it detaches from right there. I don't know. It weirds me out for some reason. It shouldn't. It's not that big of a deal, but what does this do? Django's forces have that when it's an ore pit. We could definitely use some ore. I mean, we've got a lot of it already, but being able to get up in there and cause some mayhem would be nice. Got a little bit of cash. I'm going to send her back to the city real quick. I think we've already recruited just about everything here. I'll recruit him, though, and leave him in the gear. Ah, I'll bring him along. Whatever. An extra orc never hurt anybody. We can trade for the resources we want. I would say that trading for that for wood might not be a bad plan. So five of those for one wood. Let's go ahead and go 15 right there. It's a bad trade, but I need it. So we'll take the wood out right there. Trade rates are pretty gnarly. I think we can actually fix that, though, by going to the construction menu and building trade upgrades. I think they are, I don't know, they're somewhere around here. You can do a mage guild. I think there's something around here where you can actually make the father sky totem, the marketplace. There we go. I think that's the one that there's going to be a chain that goes downwards. Should I build the city hall or like not enough resources? What do I need? 5,000 gold next turn. Okay. Fine by me. She can hang out right there for a turn. And so on this turn, I would very much love it if we could get the City Hall. Make me a little bit more money. It's a long-term investment, but we'll make the money back pretty quickly. Take us three turns to make the 5000 that we spent. Not a big deal. She should be all right over here. Let's give her some movement. We don't have any money right now, so having her ride around and handle random things would probably... Like with this wolf over here, he's trivial. I'll send her out to go kill off some of the little fights around. And we lost a couple of units. It's okay. We can replenish them. I'm lazy when it comes to combat in this game. I really am. If I can avoid, like, fighting every single combat, I'll fight the real ones that actually matter, like the boss fights and the ones that are, like, moderate and above. But if they're trivial, I see no reason to eat up, like, five minutes of an episode just, like, messing around with a little fight. Is that a low fight? What is that? You go ahead and we'll start the combat right here. If it's trivial, though, I'm just going to mash my way through it. I know some people won't like that. They want to see everything fought out, but... It's usually good for you. Oh, look at that. They got an upgraded griffin. Those guys look badass. Got little ta like tassels on the front. That's what my griffins would look like. That's what my griffins would look like. I can tell you that much right now. My griffins would be looking dope. Apparently, they have very, very good initiative. So that's going to put us on our heels right off the straight of the gate. So how many of these can I kill? And which one of these are worse? I'm assuming the one with the armor. So 24 versus 22... Okay, so kill them off right now. So that's going to be one set of enemies down. Harpies ain't got a whole lot that they can do right now. They're a little bit weakened and kind of lowered in their combat capabilities at the moment. So I'll fly up in there. We'll handle it right there. He's in cover, so he might get to flank around us a bit before the next turn. 
I don't like that as a possibility, but it could happen. Do a little bit of damage to him for right now. Only killed one, but it was a bonus attack anyway, so ain't nothing to worry about about that. Move the orcs down since they are my principal combat units. Get them in a position so that if he swoops in, we can flank or whatever. Basically centralize them. We killed off two right there with a throw. No double turn, though, so now we're going to have to suffer a little bit of damage. I may want to take her back to the city and recruit in the next turn because I do feel like her forces are a little bit weaker than I would like them to be. And not, like, super weak. Like, don't take it like that. But I feel like her forces have definitely been softened a bit. Let's go ahead and do the behind attack real fast. I love that armor. That armor is super sick. It's got kind of like an Ulduar type thing going on it from World of Warcraft. We can get the kill right there. You might as well take it. We doubling up today? We doubling up today. Fantastic. Get a little bit Irish in here. Get it? Doubling up? All right, whatever. Just don't ask. I do these things from time to time. And there it is. The combat ends exactly the way that I hoped it would with very, very little damage suffered to our forces. I do think she's going to have to go back this week, though, and make her make her retinues a little bit stronger. I don't think that the troops that she's running around with right now are going to long-term last. So Django's forces hold that one right there. Don't have to fight for it. It is now mine. And I didn't mean that to be punny. It just is what it is. I think we've more or less got everything cleared out on this side of the map. Probably not going to fiddle around with it too much more. Trivial fight over there for a little bit of gold and a permanent spirit bonus. So let's go ahead and get that too. Lost another centaur. How do they keep losing centaurs? Like, the centaurs are the hardest unit ever to lose. I don't get it. Like, centaurs, you should never lose a centaur. Somehow they're always losing a centaur, though. Always losing a centaur. Quick combat that one out. We're going to lose a harpy or two. Don't care about that at all because it allows her to level up and she got freebie might right there, which might help later. I'm going to make it so... Probably give her a little bit of blood rage right here just so the first couple turns she can actually get 20 times damage or whatever and help out. Eliminate enemy stacks. I think you can severely underestimate how useful it is to wipe out somebody's like full stack on the first turn Now that I've got her in Take her back to the altar here and actually I may send her out to scout since my other troops appear to be a little bit damaged So let's send her out. She'll go ahead and wipe out some of these little combats out here These neutral armies and she'll start scouting around this area. Meanwhile Imani What I would like from you, pick up some of those resources, then we'll head back to base. And that's just how we're going to end this. Hourglass. Oh, no. I never owned an hourglass before. I wish that I had like a fancy schnazzy hourglass. That'd be pretty cool. Looking all sexy. I probably could have made it if I had actually clicked on here. No movement left on that side, which leaves us with Ream. Ready to go on this side. Ready to Ream some foes. Interestingly enough, we'll quick combat that one out. Mm, looky there. It's apparently nastier than I thought it was going to be. It said trivial. Because it says trivial doesn't mean that you're going to get away with things. Go ahead and grab all the star silver and all the lovely little things you can get from around here. Oasis looks too good to be true. The Oasis was just a mirage, yet you can't shake the feeling that there is something in the corner of your eye. Okay. So the quest or the path of mirage. We've got a neutral army over here. A party of orc raiders allegedly discovered a hidden canyon deep in the valley of the blistering sands. However, the party was attacked by large hulking apes with razor-sharp claws. Only one orc woman survived to tell the tale. So the army offers to join us for 12,000 gold. Oh, but they've got centaur marauders. I'll cancel it. We'll come back in a minute when we've actually got the stacks to make it happen. Low threat army over here. We'll bypass some time by doing this. Got a pretty big stack right there, but we'll start it on off. Stop me, uh, Once I stab your bone, drink and never stop. I think these might be upgraded skellies. I can't really tell, though. Bone Drake's going to be problematic, but if we can get rid of him on the first turn, first couple turns, I wouldn't feel terrible about it. Let's... Let's keep shooting. 
Double turn right there from the plus to morale. And a crit. Might fish out a kill. No kill. Double damage will be nice, though. That'll actually set us up very, very nicely for the next turn. Over here with these little guys. Go ahead and let them throw their knives on out. 101 damage right there. We should be able to kill the Bone Drake on the next turn. It's the only unit in this entire stack that's actually going to be anything that we should worry about. That could scar us a little bit. No kill right there. Go ahead and step on back. Kill right there, though, which will be super fine. Cool. Big old dragon folk down now. Probably go in on this stack real quick with that attack. Kill off fives right there. Because the frontal assault's a little iffy, but... I'm going to take the Retaliation right here, and I'm going to try and soften that up first. Oh, look at that. He went after the Centaurs. They love them Centaurs. Maybe that's why you lose them when you auto-resolve, because the AI likes to prioritize Centaurs. I don't blame them. Centaurs are scary in this game. They can cause problems for the enemy. You can speed this up, by the way. If you wanted the combat to roll quicker, you can speed it up in the game files. Just something for people to know about. I just haven't done it yet. I'll probably put it on double or triple speed once we get a little bit further in. Get the kill right there. Oh! One made it. Okay. Well, let's go for an attack right there. Heal a little bit of damage. See if we can't make that stack a little bit lighter and less hectic. And that's how you lose an orc, kids. So we lost a couple orcs right there. That's okay. You expect to lose some every now and again. I could have played that a little bit more turtly and paranoid, but it just seems like a waste of time to me. Like, I'd rather play a little bit aggressive and just finish off the combat quicker. Go ahead and let her have her shot real fast. I love the fact that in order to be governor, she doesn't have to be in the city. That makes me super happy. There we go. A little bit of glory for you. And where do I want to take this? All friendly creatures deal damage to enemy units around when blood range ends. I will probably take... Hmm. I don't know what I like in here. Hero's might will go up a little bit. Not really a might character, but... Let's stick to the bureaucrat stuff, the governess stuff. I think that having somebody that can just be like a hardcore governess for the rest of our campaign is a smart idea. So for her, she should be able to grab some treasures out here. The Amulet of Disguise. Sounds good to me. What is that? What is it an Amulet of Disguise? It's about the sky. Everybody loves sky and clouds and things like that. Doubles and fully replenishes heroes maximum mana. Doesn't matter. Not gonna need it. Halved income from gold mines to the weeks of festivals. Oh, shit. So we're not gonna make as much money. Alright, well, what can you do? I wish that we would make more money, and I forgot to move Imani on that one, too. But she just had to hang out next to the town anyways. And pick up a grip of units. What does she have going on down in here? This area looks lucrative. As does this up here, though. Movement's a little bit lower now that we're not in our own control area. It looks like we have cities we can attack in here. We can attack and plunder it. Okay, that sounds good. On this side, what I really, really needed is we can build some more stuff if we want to. We can make a wyvern rock. It takes five of those little thin crystals, some ore and that. Enables recruitment of sand wyverns with seven per week. That's pretty cool. I'll probably upgrade the centaur lodge first, though. I like centaurs. And so that looks like it's done. Let's get in here with our recruitment. She's going to be hanging out on this side of town anyway, so... You know... Let's go ahead and get our recruitment all locked in real fast. Make her stacks a little bit more beefy. I'll more than likely just have her hang out over there and just let the stacks build for a little bit. Let the stacks build, and then we'll let Reem have the glory for a little while. Crystal's up on this side. A little bit of ore on this side. A little bit of wood right there. Pick it on up. Got a modest neutral army right there that'll make us fight for a major artifact, which is the Boots of the Explorer. 
She doesn't have boots. The Ring of Conjuring is being taken up, so use... I mean, we don't have any magic right now, so you might as well just leave the Blackguard's gloves in. But... I'd be willing to bet that there's probably a thing about artifacts in here. Maybe. There's a lot of cool little lore things that you can read, too. If you're into that sort of thing, there's lots and lots of lore in the game that you can fiddle around with. I'll probably go mess with... Yeah, let's get the major artifacts, I guess. It's a modest fight, but I think we could take it. Basilisk Riders? Yeah, they don't seem that hard to me. I think we got it. That's right, we laugh at your challenge. That's how we do it. <laughs> I think we've dealt with these guys before, and so whether or not they're a modest challenge remains to be seen. Looks like they just got pretty thick stacks of HP. Go ahead and focus on the ones that are out in the open for right now. If I could land us in a situation where we kill off one of their stacks before they even get halfway across. And the nice things about these two is that these are really, really big units. So they're going to get stuck in the middle. That's right. Make your joke, giggity big units. I know. Make your joke. Feel free. He might get a kill right there. Maybe. Yeah, he didn't fish one out, unfortunately. Probably just have her fall back one more time so she gets to a position where she can flank. Go for the double kill right there and hope that she gets a double turn from the morale gain. Nope, no gain right there. We're going to take a pretty good hit right there, so let me soften them up first. Send out the orcs. And once this army's depleted, wow, that was a good hit right there. Underestimated him. Ooh. Incapacitated. Don't know exactly what that means, but I can extrapolate and take a guess. A little bit of damage right there. It's the next round. I'm going to go ahead and have the Harpies take a retaliate unless I go, like, right there, maybe? Didn't get the kill, unfortunately. I was hoping we would. I think I'd rather kill off one from the big stack right there. The four stack's going to be a little bit more nerve-wracking. Let's go ahead and take the kill right there. I don't know if that's a recommended move that I should have done or what they like right there. I don't know. Last chance for a hero action. Let's put an arrow in him, although we're almost out of blood rage, so it doesn't really matter. He's in cover, so a little bit of a damage reduction, but we killed another one off. Little bit of damage taken to our orcs right there. I'll probably have to send her back to base to get herself all nice and refueled. Looks like his initiative got knocked off or something. I'm not really sure what happened right there. Two kills right there. Fantastic. Three less basilisks, while 12 less basilisks to deal with. That was actually a pretty nasty fight. I can't help feeling like I should have left my orcs back a little bit. Big chunk of XP, though, and so I think we also got a major artifact, which is permanent, maybe? So if we got that, it'll be worth it. I mean, disposable units for... What is this right here? A gold mine? Now, of course, our control of said gold mine, unfortunately, we're only getting half income right now, so... A little bit of a downer right there. Do we have anything else we can recruit? No? I'm gonna let her stack up for a little while. I'm actually just gonna leave the harpies right there, too. As far as the garrison goes, we've already got those up at 20s. Good, 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 good. Fortifications, too, might not be a bad plan. While we wait. Yeah, it's super cheap, too, so why not? Super duper cheap. I like this little... I don't know. Looks. I like the way that it looks. I really do. And it looks like our city is getting bigger. And so now it's got the walls around it right there. And we got, like, the little areas that we can go to. We got the market. We've got the creatures that we can get right there. That's cool. I like it, honestly. I don't like how they condensed all of our recruitment into, like, one area, though. Like, just the... Maybe it's the... You click on it and... Oh, never mind. There it is. You got the centaur lodge. That's badass. I really like it. It's all got kind of like a... I don't know. It's got like a tauren feel to it. I like it. The tauren row is my favorite race in World of Warcraft, in case you didn't know. I have a weird love for the tauren. I like them a lot. Hey, Monty, I don't think you're going anywhere right now, so I don't think there's any point. I need a little bit of cash right there. Not enough, though. So, Reem's gonna have to come back because she definitely lost her main melee combatants. I think a lot of these fights are going to be a lot nastier for her if we don't get ourselves all kitted in. What is that right there? A treasure chest. A mysterious crypt. First visiting hero finds an artifact but is cursed. 
It depends if it's a permanent artifact or not. Like, is it a permanent artifact, or is it one of the ones that's, like, temporary and you lose it at the end of the combat? Because if you lose it at the end of the combat... <laughs> bones on that. No thank you. Grab some of those little guys right there. Hey, there's the Mirage, too. Let's go to the Oasis. The water of the Oasis turns to sand in your hands. Another Mirage, yet you can hear the sound of running water. There's something very close. You are certain of it. Okay. If there's trivial fights around, I'll take those. Just take the Butcher's Bill real quick. She done leveled up, so I'll probably take... The gold is really sort of a short-term investment. I'll take the XP. Play the long game here. She looks like she's better on this side. Probably make her... So if I go in right here, what governor stuff does she have? No governor right there. Anything governor over there? What about here? Local guards, core creature capacities in this town are increased by 60 and for elite creatures by 20. Cool. Take it. You know, I realize from this she's going to be like a jack of all trades and master of none, but you level up a lot. I mean, you know, you level up quite a bit, so why worry about it? That said, I think we're just out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Loverly Might and Magic Heroes 7. I will see you all in future episodes. Trying to beef up this guy right here. And also, Reem has enough money now to hire this retinue. I'll see you all later. Hi to everybody.